when the Holy Spirit broods over any situation the situation never remains the same the move of the Holy Spirit is to bring about an encounter in your life and your life will never remain the same that's why I want you to just tell him Lord that is all I need today come and move in my life you know those situations you are believing God for Father come and move in my health come and move in my finances come and move in my relationship come and move in my family life Father I need your touch I surrender all to you come and move and make me all come and move and let there be a difference in my life I do not want to live here the same in the name of Jesus Father move brood over my situation brood over my life Lord let there be a move of your spirit in that situation oh Lord are you seeing God moving in that situation you have to see it with the eyes of faith are you seeing God moving, moving in that situation consigning that healing concerning that job situation concerning that immigration issue I want you to see it with the eyes of faith that Lord you are moving oh come and move in my situation Father that's our cry without you we are nothing Lord come and move brood over this atmosphere brood over our lives oh Father brood over that situation let that same power that rose Christ from the dead quicken, 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 quicken my mortal body let that be my testimony Lord we surrender all to you I surrender all to you move over that situation if you don't surrender it to it. Everything I give to Just surrender that situation to it. With holding nothing My shit take a skill at our lives will not remain the same. We release all to you as individuals, as a church. Do 
do that which you alone can do and take all the glory. Today we are going to look at victory over Satan's attack. Victory over satanic attack. Anytime you are not having the fullness of joy, anytime there's an odd situation or an emotional situation or a financial situation or an oppression, we know Satan is at work because he's the accuser of the brethren. He goes to and fro seeking whom to devour. That is his agenda. Bishop Oyedepo always say, he said, say, oppression is real. He said, problems are real. He said, but what is more real is our victory. What is more real is our victory. You can't stop the attack, but we want to thank God that Christ has given us the victory by our position. He gave us an outstanding victory on the cross of Calvary. Remember, God said it in Genesis chapter 3. He said, the seed of the woman, which is Christ, will bruise the head of the serpent. So that was a done deal, even from the Garden of Eden. So when Christ came, he came to secure our victory. And to secure the defeat of the enemy, that the right place of the enemy is right over our feet. Praise the Lord. We've said it that we fight from the position of victory. And when you know the result of an exam, or you know the result of a, of a tournament, you know, you stay cool because you know Christ is with you. Praise the Lord. So you will not allow the enemy to rough you. So Satan attacks. He attacked Job. If we remember, he attacked, he attacked Job. That is his work. Took everything from Job. And tried Job. Because God gave him permission. But at the end of it, Job worshipped God. And at the end of the old story, Job had twice what he lost. That's why I see someone here today. It doesn't matter the harassment from the enemy. It doesn't matter whatever you've gone through. You are going to get double for all your trouble. More than even double for all your troubles in the name of Jesus. That is the counsel of God. For your shame, I will give you double. So, I want you to brace up that whatever the attacks, you are above only. You are Heavenly seated with Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, when I look at the story of the children of Israel in the book of Judges chapter 4, a woman named Deborah came into play. And one thing I saw about Deborah was that Deborah was a spiritual woman. We are going to look at how did they get victory and we are going to marry it with our weapons of victory with the word of victory. I try to understand the victory, the V. So if I'm going to have victory over Satan's attack, I must first have the vision of where God has put me, who I am in Christ. What is my position? What has God spoken to me concerning my own life, concerning that situation I'm believing God for? The children of Israel were being oppressed for several years. And God told Deborah that this man, Caesar, that has tormented them for 20 good years, their enemy, that it was time to put him in his right position. And the right position was to kill him. <laughs> Let's look at Judges chapter 4, if the multimedia is with me. Judges chapter 4. So, Deborah called 
let's start from, yeah, it's okay. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehu was dead. As I said during the fresh anointing, some of the attacks of the enemy is because we give the enemy a foothold. When you sin against God, when you deliberately do things against God, you are breaking the edge and God will allow the enemy to teach you some lesson. I don't understand. So the children of Israel were in this form of roller coaster. They will sin and God will forgive them. They will repent. They will come and they will sin again. Then God will allow people to, you know, deal with them. And the Lord sold. It was God who allowed. Just as God allowed Job to be tempted. Because the enemy took permission from God to even, you know, attack Job. So, and the Lord sold them in the land of Jabin, king, uh, uh, sold into the land of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Azor. And the captain of whose host was Caesarea, which dwelt in Araset of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Take note. When there's an attack, whether you were wrong, whether you were not wrong, whether it's an oppression, the first person you should cry to is God. The children of Israel cried to God in the book of Exodus, and he heard their cry and sent Moses to go and deliver them. Sometimes we take the battles for granted. That's why it is when you cry to God, you will know whether this battle is it physical, is it spiritual, is it emotional, is it whatever it is, God will show you that, oh, there's, this is a way you should go about the battle. So they cried to the Lord and, uh, uh, for, the, for, for he had, can, can you go back? To, it's okay. And the children of Israel cried to the Lord, for he had 900 sharots of iron. Take note. This man, Caesarea, has, you know, as you have sharots of uh, animal, this man's sharots are iron. One in, so you can imagine you fighting a man that has iron sharots. What are you going to t- touch? I don't understand. <laughs> and 20 years, he mightily, take note. For 20 good years, he didn't just oppress them. He mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Labidot, she judged Israel at that time. I will move now to verse 6, just to cut the story. And she sent and called, so... This man, woman, during the time of administration, God told her that it was time to deliver the children of Israel from this bondage, from this attack. So she called the army general, Barak. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Aminoah, out of Kadesh, Naphtali, and said unto him, Had not the Lord God of Israel commanded saying, go and draw towards Mount Tabor and take with thee 10,000 men of children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun. Now, what is God going to do? And I will draw unto thee to the river of Koshesh, Caesarea. God said, look, the time to put an end to this embarrassment on your life has come. The time to put an end to this mockery of your life has come. There's no more going to be you enduring the enemy, you know, tormenting you. Now I want to put an end to that enemy. I will draw this man. I will lure him to a position. All I need you to do is to set yourself, put yourself in that position. You know, sometimes when God wants to promote you, they, 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 they sack you from that job. Oh, don't you know? Because God wants to promote you. And you will be fighting them to say, oh, this is the job I've been doing for 10 years, 20 years. God said, no, 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 no. It's your time of elevation. So I put an end to that mockery in your life. But we don't understand. So God said, look, gather yourself. But he sent his his mouthpiece, the prophetess, Deborah, to tell Barak, the military person of Israel, 
gather people. I know you do not have iron chariots. You have people that are not even well trained. People that are ignorant. Volunteers that are not even committed. Just go bring them. But I'm going to do something to show that I'm the God of Israel. Praise the Lord. And I will draw unto thee to the river of Kishnor Caesarea, the captain of Jabrin army, with his chariot and his multitude, and take not a strong word. I will deliver him into thy hand. God told David in 1 Samuel chapter 30, the last time I, 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 I ministered, he said, look, you will pursue you will overtake and you will recover all. But David had to fight to recover it. The truth about it is that God has given a short word that look, I will deliver your enemy into your hand. The promises of God are many. But you have to fight to take it. They are angry. Many of us say, because God has said, I'm, uh, 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 I'm healed, I'm delivered and all. The enemy will still contend with you. You will pray till your joy is full. You don't give up. You must persevere in that battle. Is it in the place of prayer? Is it in place of the word? Is it in place of confessing, seeing yourself in that position? You do not allow the enemy to blow your vision. Continuously we declare the word. Father, this is your word. Concerning my family. Concerning my home. Concerning my... You know, you keep on declaring till you see it happen. Praise the Lord. God gave them a sure word. But Barak was afraid. A prophetess came to tell you that God said he's going to deliver your enemy that tormented you for 20 good years into your hands. But what did... And Barak said unto her, If that will not go with me, oh. <laughs> if that will not go with me, then I will go. No. And Barak said unto her, If that will go with me, then I will go. But if that will not go with me, then I will not go. Why was it so? Because he has been defeated by this enemy several times. So fear was in him. He didn't have confidence in himself. But today I have come to tell someone. I'm speaking as a mouthpiece of God. That those attacks of the enemy against your life, against your family, you will see them no more. Someone is not saying a good amen. I say you will see them no more. Because God will fight for you and you will hold your peace. So, good enough. Deborah said, it's okay. If you insist I will go with you, I will go. I'm a spiritual leader, but if you want me to become a military person to follow you, I will go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Notwithstanding, you not told the man, notwithstanding, the journey that thou takest shall not be for thy honor. Because you did not believe the prophetic word, the honor will not be for you any longer. Someone else will take the honor. Do you know if he believed, he will win and the honor will be for him? But doubt sometimes make us not to subdue our enemy. We are afraid. I failed that exam before. I failed in that relationship before. I failed in this this year. You use your past to judge your present and your future. Do you know your past is the librarian of your life? Your present speaks of who you are now. Your future is the prophecy of what you are saying now. For the Lord shall sell Caesarea into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak. She prophesied, since you did not believe you want me to join you, God is going to use a woman.
to kill that enemy. Let's go to 14 and 15. Let's go to 14 and 15. And Deborah said, the second time she's saying it, the prophetic word. And Deborah said, up, for this is the day in which the Lord had delivered Caesarea into thy hand. It's a done deal. This is the day. I want you to declare, I do not know that thing that is bothering you. I want you to declare that this is the day the enemy will expire in that area of my life. This is the day God has given me victory over that situation in my family. This is the day the Lord has given me victory over that financial embarrassment, over that health embarrassment, whatever it is. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. So, Barak went down from Mount Tabot and 10,000 men after him. What happened? And the Lord discomfited Caesarea. I look at that word, discomfited Caesarea. The Lord embarrassed. The Lord made his life to be, you know, uncomfortable for Caesarea. He was on his iron chariots. He was on that top position. He was in the place where he was oppressing people. But when God shook him, when God made him to be embarrassed, he, he ran away from his iron chariot and started running with his, his leg. Can you imagine? When God puts confusion, it was confusion. When God puts confusion in the camp of your enemy, they won't even know what they are doing any longer. And he ran and ran and ran and ended up in the house of a woman he trusted. Someone say, never trust a woman. <laughs> Not you trust your sisters here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So that was how he landed in the place where Jill was. And Jill said, no, no problem. I won't tell anybody about you. Let me, you are resting. You have been running. Instead of running on charrots of iron, he was running on leg. He was tired. Your, your, God will give restlessness and sleeplessness to your enemies in the name of Jesus. So, Finally, Jill used what she had, a household weapon, and nailed the enemy. And that was the end of the torment that for the next few years, Israel was in peace. Today I've come to tell us, we're going to look at the word, the victory, and see how we can win victory. Because if you do not follow the God's command, God's prescription, obey God, you will not be able to overcome in the journey of life. When Deborah heard a word from God, she didn't keep it to herself. She passed it on to the person that was to go to fight the battle. Now, in spite of the fact that Barak did not believe and insisted she should follow, was it convenient for a woman to be leading 10,000 people? No. She said, look, I will do it to bring above. She was not um, selfish of her own self. Say, that is not my duty. But if that is going to bring victory to the house of God, I will follow you because your faith seems weak. I will follow you. When we fight the enemy, when there are battles, there are sometimes we are weak. There are sometimes we don't believe God enough. There are sometimes things we happen and discourage us. But today I've come to tell you. You see, Barak did not see the success, but Deborah saw the success. Because before they even fought, he said, this is the day God will give your enemy to you. I want you to have a vision of the end of that thing that has been embarrassing you. Have a vision. Without vision, people perish. Without vision, 
people perish. That means people flourish with vision. You flourish with vision. You flourish with that vision of what God has spoken to you. I always say it. When David was faced with Goliath, he already saw Goliath's head out of his body. He saw it. He said, look, you are coming to me with this. He said, today I will chop off your head out of your body. He replayed the faithfulness of God. Are you playing, replaying the faithfulness of God when you went through those situations and God showed up? If God showed up for you that time, do you think he will abandon you now? You are too faithful to fail me. You are too faithful to disappoint me. You proven yourself in my life. And I've come to realize you are too faithful to fail me. That was what David did. He replayed what God has done. So even when Satan is trying to tell you that this attack will kill you, can't you see you will not succeed? Just shake it out of your body to say God was faithful. When I had that accident, when I had that situation, God showed up for me. God is still on the throne. He will show up for me. And it will push you. It will will make your faith to leap up. See it. See your victory. See your victory. And as you see it, you will see God do great and mighty things in your life in the name of Jesus. You will see God do great and mighty things in your life in the name of Jesus. Another thing, in the victory, the idea is that you must have illumination of the world. Illumination of the world. is the truth you know that will set you free. Your word is a lamp. Psalm 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my paths. The more of the word of God you shew, the more of the word of God you take in, it will give you clear direction about how you will get your victory. The word. As you study the word, Deborah, it was in the place of prayer, Deborah got an insight to say, this is what God wants them to do. God has given us, you know, our inheritance through his word. As I study the word, it will take me to places. As I study the word, it will take me to greater eyes, it will take me to greater places. And today I have come to tell you, study the word the more. Don't be too lazy about the word. The more you study the word, you will see God giving you clear direction in the name of Jesus. It will give you a, a clear direction. He said, you will hear a voice speaking to you. This is the way you should go. Isaiah 30, 21. When you are going the wrong way, it will tell you. There will be an uneasiness in you. So the more of the illumination of the word you have, the more of the word you, you are well loaded, it gives you victory. Where you are deficient physically, we tell you, go and study. Oh, you need this person in your life. Go for coaching. You are doing it wrongly. Humble yourself and go and do something else. It will tell you. So you need illumination of the word. Today I pray for you and I. We will take time to study the word. We will embrace ourselves with the word so that the enemy will not come with his lies to discourage us, to, 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 to oppress us in the name of Jesus. Continuously, we will study the word. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The seed there means your confession. Your confession. What are you confessing? Sometimes some people come for prayer meeting. After the prayers, immediately they leave. They negate everything they've prayed about. Ah, oh, it's uh, Windsor. Oh, it's, Canada. it's so difficult. There are no jobs. Oh, this and that. You've just prayed that God thank you for doing this and all. 
As you are going, the enemy steals away that word from you and you start negating everything that God has spoken to you. Do you know the Shunammite woman? In the book of 2 Kings chapter 4. The daughter was dead. The husband was asking him, uh, 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 he said, where are you going to meet the servant of God? The servant of God sent Gehazi his servant. He said, it is well. Was that not an attack from the enemy? But she chose to see life instead of death. She kept on saying it is well till it became well. Don't allow the enemy to take away your faith. Don't give him room to oppress you. Keep on confessing. That's your victory. I might not have the babies yet, but I will have the babies. At my God's own timing, I will be pregnant. At God's own timing, he will remember me. I've not yet had the degree. I will have the degree. It doesn't matter whether I'm failing now, but as I keep on trying, I will get there. I may not have the house now, but I know I am somewhere. God is taking me somewhere. I am not where I used to be. I'm in a process going to where God is taking me to. Always be optimistic. Speak the right word. Don't allow the enemy take away your joy. When any time the enemy, you, you see, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 10, it says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring like seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith. Your faith work must be, you know, so strong. And say, I won't buy to your lies. Yes, you are trying to discourage me. You are trying to take, you know, something from my mind. You are going to put, put a condemnation in my mind. I won't buy to your lies. Resist by faith. The faith of the word of God. Resist by faith. And that was it. You see, Deborah was not discouraged. She stood on the word of God. She prophesied the word of God. She said it and it was so finally. I try to understand. So our confession is very, very important. Keep on confessing the right thing. Keep on confessing the right thing. And as you keep on confessing the right thing, you will see how God will show up for you and I in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now the T there means you have to train yourself. You have to train yourself. Sometimes we want to win battles and we are not well equipped. Now I know it's a physical battle or a spiritual battle. How am I training myself to be able to overcome? You see, Saul gave David his own armor. He said, no, I have not proved it. I can't use it. What works for Mr. A might not work for Mr. B. Everybody fights their own battle in different ways. Some people will tell you, this is the way I fight my battle. Other people will say, this is the way I fight. So fight is God's own approved plan. If God tells you, go and sing, and the enemy will destroy themselves. Go and sing, and the enemy will destroy themselves. If God said, no, in this case, you have to pray till you see your breakthrough, till you see the hand coming out of the river. Go and pray. Tarry in the place of prayer. So the more I commune with God, the more it tells me, the strategy to use in any the, uh, uh, fight. Oh, you've been doing that program. Why don't you go and train for this? There's a way in this, uh, uh, in this career path now. Leave that career path, go and train. Many people graduated in a different course, but what they are doing now is different. What is giving them money is different. Is it because, because they align themselves with what God has said to say, it's okay, maybe there's no way in that path. You know, God's ways are progressive ways, so. God's ways are progressive ways. So you will train to be able to use whatever weapon. Even in the place of prayer, you see, if you do not pray, you become a prey. And the only way to know how to pray is by pray. So you say, oh, I don't know how to pray. Learn it. Communicate with God. 
Join people, tell people to join you in prayer. And before you know it, you become someone that is able to express himself or herself to God. So we must learn how to train. Go and train. Upgrade yourself. Go and train in that program. Go and train your spiritual armor. You know, sharpen your spiritual armor. And you will see where God will take you to in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So, because if we look at it, if it is a battle that is above you, like Deborah, they were fighting an army that had iron chariots. There was no way they could have won. There was no way. But God had a way they were going to win. That's why he confused the leader. And he ran from what he was holding as his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his um, armor. And he, f- he came down and started running with his foot. I don't understand. Because God fought the battle. I see God putting confusion in the camp of your enemy. Whatever they think they have, God is going to take it away from them in the name of Jesus. It will make their, their wisdom foolishness in the name of Jesus. It will make their wisdom foolishness in the name of Jesus. Because God is set to give you victory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we are going there. So we have, uh, the, you train yourself then. The order is you must always be optimistic, be positive. Confession is different from being positive. You are confessing. Some people are confessing negative. Some people are confessing positive. But be optimistic. See good. See the cup, uh, the cup half full, not half empty. Always see good in everything. Oh, this will work together for my good. I know whatever have, uh, has happened to me, it is going to end up in praise. I don't understand. See the positive. Because that was what Deborah said. He said, though you are weak, you don't seem to understand what God is saying. I will go with you. But I am sure God is going to give us the enemy today. She kept on saying it. She, her eyes were not on the enemy's strength. Her eyes was on God's strength. Once you keep on knowing the God you are serving, you see your strength in God's strength, not the enemy's strength. Praise the Lord. Be optimistic. Continuously be optimistic. I want you to tell yourself I will be optimistic. The enemy will not take away my voice of praise. I will be optimistic. Continuously, I will be optimistic. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I will be optimistic. Praise the Lord. The arrow there which we are going to do is that you should start rejoicing. Start rejoicing. Even before you see the victory. God is good to me. You know, the children of Israel, that was their weapon. Praise the Lord for his mercy endured forever. They were saying the goodness of God. Start rejoicing. The joy of the Lord will always be your strength. Start rejoicing. I have not seen the promotion. I have not seen the, you know, the job. But I'm rejoicing in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my son. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. That's that song when you say, um, we, we have the song, the Maxwell, they are going to sing it for me. You know, about, uh, Hallelujah. 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 It's a song of victory. Hallelujah. Eh. Can you come forward? Hallelujah. Oh. Let the song of rejoicing fill this uh, prayer. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. The final why before we it, it means you are joined with God. You and God, you are a winning team. God is with you. You and God, you are with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to can we can I get them here? Well, Let the sound of rejoicing fill the land. He has made a way. Dance to the Lord. Hallelujah, it's the sound of victory. Hallelujah.
thank you continuously we will rejoice because your joy will always be our strength as we sing hallelujah as we have sung Lord let uncommon doors be open let the enemy completely oh Lord be defeated and let your name alone be glorified thank you Father for in Jesus name we are prayed Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Victory is sure. I want you to declare to someone victory is sure. Victory is sure. Victory is sure to you. Victory is sure. Thank you, Father. 